Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a beer that should be quite interesting, it's another collaboration beer, half Swedish, half English. So we're going to go up to Dugis Bregory from Landvetter, just outside Gothenburg, Jutebori you should say in Swedish of course, and this is their collaboration that they did with Cloudwater from Manchester in England. So this one's called Paleo Paleo Paleo, I think you know what style it's going to be, and it comes in at 6.5% ABV, which is kind of surprising because um, that's very heavy actually for a pale ale in my experience and I can't think other than using more malt obviously in a beer or adding brewing sugar to the, the fermentation how they would actually get that alcohol content if it is a pale ale. The pale ale and the IP of course are separated by their, uh, their malt to hops ratio. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how they would do that, but I mean, we can talk about styles all day. I mean, who really cares if it's a good beer? And with both of these breweries involved, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a good one. It was rated, I think it was four point something it got on uh, Untapped, but it also had a rating of 93 overall on Rate Beer and 96 within the style. So it probably will be a good beer. We'll go with that. But this, of course, was another one that we got through the Swa Partiers in Sistia and Berlaga over here in Sweden on the 19th of May 2017. So yeah, should be a really nice beer for us to try and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. So as always with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries. If you want to get straight to the tasting of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website to link to my other reviews that I've done both from Cloudwater and from Dugas Brewery. Constantly adding to both of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city or state. Whatever it is you're interested in. There are playlists there for the beers from different countries. You can check out my ones from England and from Sweden. They're constantly being added to it. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So don't hesitate to get in touch. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Dugas Bravery first off then. So as I mentioned to you, these guys are based in Landvetter on the outskirts of Gothenburg, Jutebori would say in Swedish of course, on the west coast of Sweden. So the brewery was established back in 2005 in Mölndal by Mikael Engström Dugge and since 2010 the um they focus quite a lot on the the ferment on the production of top fermenting beers. So they were doing a lot of fruit beers, a lot a couple of sour beers I think as well, and uh, a lot of IPAs and paleos and stuff like this. But they've also started doing stouts and uh, all of these kind of things as well. So they are starting to diversify a little bit. But um, due to the kind of renaissance that was going on in Swedish craft beer, the big boom. Gothenburg, of course, is the kind of beer city in Sweden these days. They actually had to move, so they outgrew the facility in Milndal, which has been taken over by somebody else. I forget who and they did relocate to Landvetter. So the older brewery had a capacity of only 1,500 hectolitres of beer per year, but the new facility started off with 8,000 hectolitres of beer per year, and they have been expanding that ever since they moved in. And these guys are probably one of the breweries that you're more likely to find outside of Sweden, of course, along with Omnipoyo and a couple of others, but they produce some really good stuff and uh, it's a very, Dugas Brewery are a very good place to start if you're particularly interested in Swedish craft beer. And if you come to visit, of course, I would really recommend Gothenburg. Um, but Skåne, of course, has a fairly decent beer scene as well these days. So Sweden, Sweden is a good beer country. Let's just sum it up like that. So that's all you need to know about Dugas. As I say, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. But on to Cloudwater Brewing Company then. So these guys were founded back in early 2015 by Paul Jones and James Campbell after the latter left Marble Brewing Company. But they're also joined by Al Wall and Will France who have a wealth of experience in home brewing, professional brewing and also bar management as well. So the company signed a lease for an archway which allows them to kind of sour many of their beers. They've got space for up to 200 barrels at a time to do their souring project. But the brewing began in March 2015 in Manchester and they officially opened their brew pub in early April. So they started off with a small 2,400 litre brew kit and they've got enough floor space to expand that over the next few years to brew double the capacity I think they said actually but um, they're a brewery who have gained a lot of, uh, of plaudits recently if you watch the English guys that I'm friends with like uh, Harry, Dean, Craig, Jake Robert Hopsey and all of these guys, do check out their channels of course, you, uh, you'll you see that how much they rave about the Cloudwater beers. They were doing the Deepa series for a very long time, uh, which has just been changed recently, but these guys of course are a very, very good brewery and uh, you will see more reviews from me on them very, very soon. So if you do get the chance to check out Cloudwater, they're probably one of the best English craft brews around that you're going to find, But and they are expanding of course as well. So I'm not sure how easy it is to find their beers outside of the UK, I think it is pretty difficult. 
I can't get them over here in Sweden. I've not really seen many of them over in Copenhagen either, where you've got the free beer, mar free beer market, so I think they are pretty much limited to the UK at the moment. But a brewery that I definitely recommend you check out, and like I said, my English beer tube and friends really rave about them, and make sure you check out all of their channels. So yeah, and that's all you need to know about both the breweries in this case. We'll get on to actually tasting this beer. So like I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 6.5% paleo, which I would have thought got it into IPA territory. Who cares about the style though, as long as it's good. There you can see the artwork on this one. The little, a little bit about the breweries on the side. This of course here, this little guy here is the cloud water symbol. I do like that and in the description is just paleo, 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 so on. I'm not even going to bother reading that. It doesn't tell you what uh, hops and things it has in it. It does have oat, wheat and avena in this one. I'm not sure what avena is in Swedish actually. But yeah, really nicely presented. Plain bottle cap on this one, just with a date on it. I would guess that this one was bottled on the 3rd of May uh, this year, because usually these beers have a year shelf life. So this one goes out of date on the 3rd of May 2018. But without further ado then, let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting. So yeah, nice smoky opening on this. And you can smell some of these lovely tropical fruits coming out of this as you open it up. But look at that, that's going to be... We'll sugar it up and just, I think there might be a little bit of sediment in there. Just see, so you can see that it was pretty clear. It might just haze up a little bit since there's oats in it. No, staying pretty clear. If I look at the bottle, there's actually not really any sediment on that one. So yeah, I was expecting it to be a little bit of a hazy beer. But um, yeah, so yeah, as you can see, this one's poured a nice kind of uh, bright yellowy kind of golden colour. There's a Finger of a frothy white head on this one, some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, not too many though, one or two little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head, and if I put my fingers behind the glass, I think you can see there is a little bit of transparency to this beer, but not too much. I think you're seeing it on the camera, I'm looking at the little control down here, I think you're seeing it just as a little bit darker than it actually is, but to me, it's a fairly kind of bright yellowish colour, this one, with a little bit of transparency, but overall it looks really nice, and just as I move the beer around, I'm getting a lot of these kind of nice tropical fruits and a sort of tangerine orange. I do wonder if there's some mosaic in here, actually. But let's have a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Oh yeah, I, I think there's some mosaic in there. It's definitely got some of that nice tangerine orange. There's a little bit of stronger orange too, I think, so maybe there's some amarillo in there. But yeah, it smells really nice. There's a lot of nice tropical fruit in there. There's a little teeny bit of like passion fruit or something. But I think it's mangoes and there's a sort of uh, peaches kind of, maybe not peaches, maybe not sharp enough for peaches. It's maybe a sort of apricot, kind of papaya sort of thing coming out of this one. Yeah, it's, it's basically, this one's a tropical fruit bowl with a bit of oranges in it. That's it. It's not too pungent an aroma, it's not as strong as some of the ones that you'll come across. And based on the aroma, maybe because of how pungent the hops are, you maybe could, you maybe would think this is a paleo rather than an IPA, but like I say, it's just surprising with the alcohol content on this one. But we'll see when we taste it, of course, the style doesn't matter, it's whether it's a good beer or not, I keep saying that. But yeah, there's a bit of floral, kind of grassy sort of character, as you would expect from these kind of American hops that they've probably used in this. You can smell a little bit of bready and biscuity character as well, but the big complexity to the, the aroma of this beer definitely comes from the fruit. But it smells really nice, as I always say, just take a little bit of time and mull over the aroma of this beer before you get stuck. And I do suspect that the hops in this are probably mosaic and citra at least. Yeah, I think I would stick with that on this one. But it's really nice aroma. I love the orange I love the orangey hops, of course, when it comes to IPs, which you'll know if you've watched the channel before. But this one should be a really nice one. So this is Paleo 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 from Dugas Bravery up in Landvetter near Gothenburg in Sweden in collaboration with Cloudwater from Manchester in England. So let's get stuck into this beer then. This one should be really nice. Let's go. Oh yeah, no. On the flavour, definitely a paleo. Yeah, it's just a more alcoholic paleo, so that's quite an interesting. I need to, with my home brewing that I've been doing, I need to look into a little bit more about uh, getting higher alcohol paleos, I think. But yeah, on first taste, you can see straight away 
this is a pretty damn good beer. So thumbs up to Dugas and to Cloudwater for this one. You wouldn't expect anything less from either of these breweries right enough. So yeah, the malt base is simple enough. You've got that kind of bready character that goes right across the middle of your tongue. There's a teeny, teeny little bit of biscuity note, but there's actually a little bit of grainy, sort of spicy character to this one, I would say. The complexity, of course, comes out from the hops on this one. And a lot, to me, a lot of the juicy, fruity characters coming out in the aftertaste. I really like how that one comes across. So yeah, the hops, as you'd expect, there's a teeny bit of earthiness in the back corner of the palate, and that does make me think it's a little bit, there is a bit of mosaic in here. I always find mosaic gives you a little bit of a, a kind of distinctive earthy edge at the back of your tongue. But then as you come further forward along the sides of your palate, you've got that typical sort of a floral, spicy kind of character there. It's not quite resinous, I would say. I'm not convinced that it's resinous. I think it's more of a spicy floral character. And around the very front curve of your tongue, you get a little bit more of that lighter kind of grassy note and of course as I always say the fruity esters are just in that little oily bubble that comes behind the very front curve of your palate. Yeah, this is good. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. This is a, you know, the other thing with this beer you should probably point out is with how light and easy drinking it's going. It's maybe a bit dangerous that it is 6.5%, but like I say, it's a good beer. That's the main thing. Um, but yeah, with this one, I think there's a bit of passion fruit just kind of underpinning this beer a little bit. There's a sort of slight, it's a sort of darker, slightly oily passion fruit or grapefruity kind of thing to this one. You can just feel that underpinning the beer. It's not quite as dark as grapefruit right enough. So it may be just a really kind of stronger citrus. The, the fruity character of this one is quite complex, but you get a lot of these nice, lighter, juicier fruit notes out of this one as the flavour progresses. But that's really good. Seriously, if you get the chance to try this beer, have a go at it. This is one of the best pale ales I've had in quite a wee while, actually. Really enjoying this one. A lot of the mosaic hop, I'm sure there's some of that in here. And um, I, it's a hop that I really have just grown to love since I've encountered it. It's really, really good. Um, but yeah, as you progress with this beer, you start to get a little bit of the tangerine notes. You can see how long it's been since I've taken a sip of this one. So this is when you start to get the fruit complexity. There's a bit of tangerine character. There's some sort of a, I think there maybe is a little bit of a peachy flavor to this one, but there's apricots in there. There's a little bit of papaya. But it's that sort of tangerine orange that's just kind of lingering. There's a bit of a stronger kind of, there's a bit of a stronger sort of grapefruity character to this one as well, which is quite interesting. But yeah, the main point to take away from this beer is pretty damn good. That's one of the best paleos I've had in a wee while actually. So if you come across this one and you get the chance to try it, I recommend that you do because both breweries have done a great job with this one. So yeah, big thumbs up to Dugas Bravery and to, uh, to Cloudwater for this one. You wouldn't expect anything less. I would particularly recommend this one to people who, you know, quite like the mosaic hop. I think there's a good bit of mosaic and I suspect there's some kind of a uh, citron here. There is a little bit of a mangoey character to the taste right enough. Uh, which makes me think there's maybe a bit of citra, but it's it's a good beer, this one. I really like how all the flavours in this come across. So if you want a nice, kind of easy drinking beer with a good bit of kind of floral bitterness to it, and a nice little bit of fruit, then it's going to tick all the boxes for you. It's really nicely done. In terms of the mouthfeel, I'd say this guy is probably mid-bodied. Yeah. To me, it comes across as quite oily. The carbonation has a little bit of a prickle to it, but overall it's quite smooth. The carbonation helps a little bit of that kind of spicy floral character to the beer. There's a good bit of hoppy bitterness to this one. As I say, that sort of spicy floral character on the edge of the tongue is really nice. There's a good bit of fruity juiciness to this. There's a little bit of that slightly darker, almost grapefruity character to this beer. And um, yeah, and then the juicier fruits come out a little bit later. The malt base has a little bit of grainy dryness to it as well. But overall, like I said, 
it's a really quite nice beer this one so if you get the chance to try this I really recommend that you do it's a really good beer and you wouldn't expect anything else from either brewery in this one so yeah big thumbs up to Dugas and Cloudwater on this one so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share I will catch you soon with a lot more beer reviews let me know in the comment section below your own thoughts on this beer and your favourite beers from both breweries of course and until the next time it's landed just now, make sure you check out Dugas Bravery and Cloudwater. So yeah, cheers. This is a really good beer.